Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Stellaris from Paradox Development Studios. That's right, it is developed and published by Paradox. This game retails for $40 on Steam, and this is not your normal first impressions video. In fact, this is the first video in a series. I don't do many series here uh, anymore, especially Let's Play style series as I do air quotes uh, with my fingers. Uh, so why a series? Well, Stellaris is pretty much the only game I am playing right now, and I know that if I want to get any content up on my channel, it is probably going to have to be of me playing Stellaris. This game has really hooked me. I am a strategy game novice. I have only dipped my toes in, you know, early Civ games one and two way back in the day. Man, this this game has really drug me into the 4X or, or grand strategy genre. I don't know. Some people argue about uh, exactly what this game might be, but uh, I really don't care because I don't really know the exacting definitions of 4X versus grand strategy. I do know, though, that this game is a whole lot of fun and I am going to play it. So again, this is a strategy game. It is a lot, There's a lot of management. There are a lot of menus and things like that, but this game does a, a great job of making all that flow so perfectly. So I'm going to start a new empire and I'm going to play through uh, as much of the game as I can before either uh, you guys get bored and walk away or I get uh, wiped out of existence. So uh, yeah, let's get going. We're going to start a new game and we're going to take a look at one of the coolest aspects of, aspects of this game, uh, which is the ability to create your own race. And that is a really, really cool thing. So you do have some, some races here that start out, you know, you have, you know, kind of man, a couple of different versions of humans. And uh, then several other uh, species, you know, all pretty cool stuff. Lots of options. Uh, these do have, you know, sort of a, a laid out backstory, which is really, really nice. Uh, but uh, I decided to create a few races, uh, a few empires as I played through. I created the uh, Democratic Valdari Union in my uh, offline game, my main offline game. And uh, the idea behind these guys uh, because you do pick a whole lot of traits as you're going through a lot of traits and, and their form of government and the uh, traits that they have as a people, as well as the traits that they, uh, the values that they sort of have as an empire. So uh, the idea behind these people uh, were that they were just, they're kind of all about spreading themselves. You know, they're, they're industrialists and they're materialistic and uh, they're xenophiles, so they love uh, a a other aliens and going out in the world and discovering things. Uh, however, they are slow breeders, but they live long. Uh, they, they learn fast and they're strong. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun in my offline game with these guys. And uh, so, uh, you know, they're here and they're going to appear at some point probably, or most definitely because I have it set to forced. Uh, in my new game. So that's one of the really cool things you can do. Uh, empires that you create, you can actually force them to spawn in uh, future games. And so these guys are going to spawn. Uh, to spice things up in this playthrough, I did a, a little something fun. I made the uh, I made the jackhole jerk cat empire called the Floof Star Kingdom. Uh, so these guys have some of the traits that cats have. And you know, that, that one particular cat that you know, the one that will just reach around uh, out of nowhere and uh, swat you on the nose just for no reason. Yeah, that's what these cats are supposed to be. Uh, so much like cats, they're sedentary, they're solitary, and uh, they, you know, most cats probably think they're pretty strong, pretty badass. These guys actually are. And uh, the idea of their empire, their despotic empire, uh, which uh, is ruled with an iron fist, uh, is that they hate people because, you know, that cat hates people, right? And uh, they are fanatic militarists, so they are out there trying to swat everybody in the nose that they possibly can. Uh, so these guys should spice things up because it can occasionally get a little too docile uh, in these games, especially in the early going. Uh, so these guys coming from their home world of drool, uh, which that was actually a randomly generated name, and I love that. Uh, the thing I figured out with these guys, or you know, my my backstory that I made in my head, is that uh, these guys are pissed off all the time because they're native to an ocean world. So it's a race of cats that are forced to live uh, on ocean worlds. So that kind of makes them uh, a little more pissed off than your average cat. And finally, uh, for my character, for my empire, I created the. Uh, Frugal Mandate, the Frugal Mandate. Yes, uh, I am Big Dave, I am cheap. Uh, this uh, symbol, by the way, is the symbol for uh, energy credits in the game. So much like my uh, little icon is a dollar sign, uh, this is sort of the dollar sign equivalent for the world of Stellaris. 
So the idea behind these guys is that they are essentially cheap. They are hoarding their resources and their money and spending it in a very strategic manner because that's the thing about being cheap. Being cheap doesn't mean never spending money, right? Being cheap means knowing when to spend your money, hanging on to it for just the right moment. So every trait that I picked for these guys, it does that. It gives them the money that they need later. It gives them the, the, the money to buy something right when they need it. Uh, so they are thrifty which gives them plus 15 energy credits, which is basically the money of the game. And they are industrious, which gives them plus 15% minerals. Minerals are, you know, the other resource. You need energy credits and minerals to produce or maintain anything in the game. So in order to do that, I had to take a couple of negative traits. Uh, you know, sedentary. Oh, these guys don't, they don't move around very easily. And uh, also repugnant. And uh, my little backstory that I thought up here was, uh, you know, these guys look... Uh, they look like the Skeksis from uh, from Dark Crystal. So, you know, it's it's a race of people who all look like these hideous bird creatures. And uh, their native tongue is that they communicate in those sort of uh, whimpers that the Chamberlain does in Dark Crystal. The, uh, mm, that, yeah, that's their entire language. It's just a series of those whimpers and groans. And uh, so, yeah, of course, when they are around, everybody's happiness just automatically goes down by 1%. Yeah. So their form of government is a plurocratic oligarchy, which means that uh, every 50 years or so we'll have an election and uh, that ruler uh, will sort of rule in a, in a way, you know, the, 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 it's from the, from the position of power of the wealthy elite, you know, and, and as a saver, as a, as a cheap person, I do like to think that I'm sitting back here with my, with my, uh, you know, masterful budget and that I somehow am better than everybody else, right? Which is not actually true, but, you know, follow me here for this story. Uh, yeah, so this is a nation of people that are basically ruled by the wealthy elite. And uh, the individualist uh, trait actually gives us more energy credits. Yes, so again, we are stacking up our finances here. And the fanatic materialist gives us 10% on every single other currency in the game. So this, uh, this is a race that is built from the ground up to uh, save money, to save, 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 and then spend, spend, spend when they need it. Also, uh, in my little head story, uh, they live on this arid world because uh, it's the cheapest. You know, no one wants to live on a crappy arid world, so uh, they live there because of that. Oh, uh, this is going to be fun, or I hope it is. So uh, let's get going. The frugal mandate. Let's uh, venture out into space. We'll talk about some of the other things that you're seeing as the game goes on, but uh, I think it is time to make it happen. So here we go. I'm going to try to keep it a little bit smaller. I don't want it to get too huge for this playthrough. Uh, let's go with uh, an elliptical sure, and uh, we'll keep it kind of low. Let's do 12 with only two advanced empires. So there will be 12 other empires on this map with me, 400 stars to split between all of us with uh, two advanced AI somewhere on the map. So these are guys that could kind of kick your butt right out of the uh, right out of the gate. Uh, there is no easy setting. Normal is easy. We're going to keep it on normal. Uh, FTL method, that's just how you travel between star systems. And instead of forcing everybody to have the same method, which I use uh, wormholes, I'm going to let people use whatever method they would naturally use. So either they have warp drive, they use hyperdrive lanes, or they use wormholes. And uh, the, fl <laughs> the, frug the frugalians, as I think I'm calling them, uh, they use wormhole technology. So uh, yeah, let's go. Let's get in here. Let's do this. All right, the Frugal Mandate in the eons since the first primitive Frugal communities. I'm, I'm going to laugh every time I say that. Took shape in the dry canyons and mesas of Rix. Rix is our home world. Our civilization has spread and prospered. As scientific knowledge increased and new outposts were found across our world, trade flourished and tied the various nation states together until they became a single entity. Power rested with the merchant princes, the true architects of our achievements as a civilization. Now, after the successful creation of our artificial subspace wormholes, the finest minds of the Frugal Mandate have finished construction of the first wormhole station at the edge of our system. The stars themselves are finally within our grasps. And I'm not going to read every single one of these with as much gravitas as that. Mostly I will summarize these uh, large blocks of text when they come up, but that being the first one, it felt like that's something that we should do. So this is Stellaris. You're going to look at a map like this a lot or a map like this a lot. So this is where we are positioned in the galaxy, not too far from an edge, which is kind of what I like. I can kind of back myself into a corner if I need to. Uh, but yeah, here we are. This is our elliptical galaxy, not unlike the uh, the Milky Way. 
And uh, we know a little bit about it to start with. Like, for instance, we know that the uh, Haribon Nebula is here, and we know about the Whispering Garden Nebula and things like that, things that we probably could have observed, uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of years ago with our telescopes. Uh, it is, uh, let's say, January, space January. I don't know. Space January 1st of the year 2200. So uh, we're going to get off to a, a start here, and we're going to see what we can do. Again, we do use wormhole technology to move around. Uh, at this green outline you see, that is uh, the boundary of uh, the Frugal Mandate at this time. Uh, so we cannot uh, populate outside of this without doing uh, some acrobatics. So uh, these stars, while in our reach, because they are, exist inside this dotted uh, line here, this dotted circle here, uh, they are not yet colonizable. Colonizable? Is that that's a sure whatever. All right, so this is our uh, this is our system, the uh, Rixaru system. Uh, we are of course uh, orbiting the star uh, Rixaru on the planet Rix, and uh, we are going to uh, set out to make our fortunes here. So uh, yeah, let's do this. So there are some basics uh, to the game. You have uh, combat force. This is our first strike force. You have a construction ship, you have a science ship. There are other things that come into play at some point, but this is pretty much it. You've got your worlds, you've got your fleets, you've got your civilian ships. This is the outliner, this is your friend. We love the outliner because he helps us manage our entire uh, empire as we expand. So the first things we normally do in a game like this, uh, it is paused right now. It's a real-time game, not turn-based. We are paused at the moment so that we can kind of compose ourselves. Uh, the first thing I normally like to do is grab our science ship, uh, which if we want to take a closer look at him, he's right here. We grab our science ship. I also picked this style of ship because it looked the most utilitarian because, of course, we wouldn't make, waste money on making our ships look nice. Uh, we grab our science ship, and we need to assign him a task. So uh, what we're going to do is, as, as the, the text said, we're just getting out into the world here, or out into the, to the solar system. We need to explore more about these planets. You know, we've, we've likely been watching them from the night sky uh, for, for thousands of years, but now we need to actually see, you know, what is on Loch Ness? You know, what, what's Tron Chet actually like on the surface? So uh, we need to survey our solar system. So let's go ahead and survey the system. And when we unpause, our science ship is going to go around to each individual planet. It's going to scan it, and it's going to tell us vital information about it. Information that will be uh, b really be the building blocks of our entire empire. So uh, we hope that we start in a good system. We cross our fingers uh, and hope that we start in a good system. So uh, this, again, is our home planet, Rix. Here's Rix. Here's uh, government, Governor Raymond Leclerc. Uh, I chose the names that are basically just like regular people names because I thought it'd be hilarious to have these guys just named after like regular people. So this is Raymond, Governor Ray, as he likes to be called. And uh, this is his world, Rix. Uh, this is not our overall leader. This is just the governor of Rix. So uh, he is uh, hanging out here on Rix, and uh, a lot of information here. We'll get into this as we go. Not a lot really to say. I will show you a couple of things, though. We're going to take a look at the surface of our planet. This surface is, is how we manage our actual peoples. So you can see here we have population, or as they're called, pop in the game. And uh, these population units are here to uh, help us work the land. You can see some land by default has a potential. There's potentially one apple, which is food. So there's one food just innately in this tile. If you put a pop in there, he pulls in that one food. If you, uh, see how it goes, uh, it goes white. If you move him away, it goes dark again. Uh, if you leave him here, he's going to pull in one mineral and one food. And uh, that's how you kind of manipulate your pop. You do have obstructions that you need to clear, like for instance, an industrial wasteland. Uh, on other planets that you settle, these uh, these obstructions, these blockers might be foreign to you, so you'll have to research how to actually get through them. Uh, we have armies, that's something for way later on. We have a spaceport that is in uh, orbit here. Let's see if we can find him. Here he is, right here, looking like some kind of uh, Asian-inspired lamp or something. And uh, you can use him to uh, build stuff. So we can build uh, corvettes to add to our uh, first strike force, or we can replace or uh, increase the number of construction or science ships if we should need to. 
that's pretty much the planet, and we are going to aim to have as many of these planets as we can. Management of these planets will eventually become uh, easier through the sector system, but again, that's uh, for a later time. We'll get into that quite a bit later. So man, there's so much to talk about with this game, so much to talk about, and we're probably not going to accomplish anything in this first episode, uh, but we're, we're going we're gonna to do what we can, okay? So again, this is our planet, this is our home planet of Rick's, uh, there it is in all its glory and wonder, and uh, it is uh, horrible looking, just just an arid mess of a planet, but uh, you know, it was, uh, really, it, was, it was really a good price, we couldn't pass it up, so uh, we settled there. So let's go ahead and close our planet, uh, planet uh, window, it's a window, yeah. And let's take a quick look at our uh, at our force here, our strike force first strike force. That's a, I think that name is randomly generated strike force. We could rename it if we want. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, three corvettes uh, accumulating about seventy five military power, and uh, that can be used in order to uh, do a simplistic combat system, which we will uh, probably see later. Here's our empire. Here is uh, Executive Big Dave of the Frugal uh, Empire. Now, eventually, you know, my time will pass. I am, I am, uh, you know, in in the uh, the the wealthy elite, of course, of of uh, Ricks, and uh, I am currently leading the uh, the Frugal uh, mandate. But uh, you know, who who knows for how long? I was I was put in power uh, just uh, here recently, and I will uh, leave power, whether alive or dead, on uh, twenty two forty. Uh, in 2240. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot of information that comes here. Just it's it's a shotgun blast of information. Uh, not a lot of stuff that we're going to get into. As you can see here, uh, this is all going to come into play at some point, and you will get an explanation of it. But uh, now is not the time. So let's very quickly uh, check the uh, notification bar up here. And it is asking us to set our research. So research, of course, is how we get things done in, in the space world, right? Uh, we need to figure out how things work. And we do that through three specific uh, paths of research, physics, society, and engineering. And so you can see that we have an income each month for each of these, and that income goes towards fulfilling our research needs. Also, while we're up here, why don't we take a look about? Here are the energy credits, and we can get a very detailed breakdown of the actual use of the energy credits. Uh, we have a maximum storage capacity of 2,500, and we are bringing in 8.2 energy credits a month after our considerations, which are ship maintenance, building maintenance, station maintenance, and army maintenance. So we are producing 13 overall. We're bringing in a net of 8.2 to put into our storage coffers for later. So we will need to constantly manage our energy because everything that we build, everything that uses energy, uses energy, right? So it all has a maintenance cost and we have to maintain all of it. We are going to be spending minerals and minerals luckily don't really have that much maintenance associated with them. As you can see, there's some ship maintenance that takes away from minerals, but for the most part, the minerals that you earn are pretty close to the minerals that you actually can, can net. Um, and then we have influence. Influence is the weirdest of the, uh, you know, the, these are basically, you know, uh, oil and and you know wood or something uh this is the weird one influence it comes in at a very slow rate and it's used to do big things around your empire like recruiting leaders to to be governors or to be admirals of your fleets uh, this is a finite resource that is affected by many things and it is one of the things that that i find myself struggling to manage the most the, the thing i find myself struggling to manage the most is energy uh, because I have a tendency to outpace my production, uh, but we'll, you'll you'll see that in live in action later. All right, so for uh, oh god, we got what five, maybe another five minutes in this episode. Let's go ahead and uh, let's try to set things in motion here. We we have our we've got our science ship, and he is going to go out. Uh, the science ship. What's our science science ship called? Uh, Marksman. Oh, I love these names. This is the Audacity. Oh, I'm I'm recording in Audacity. So how fitting. Um, so. Uh, you know, we've got our science ship. He's going to go out. He's going to survey. we got to set up our research. So let's go ahead and jump into the research pane here and uh, let's set up some research. So we'll start with the physics research. And uh, as you can see here, we have uh, Kofi uh, Biobaku. Uh, he is, uh, he, that's a great actual, that that is, he looks like a Kofi. Uh, so there's almost no variance in these characters. So every single person in my society looks like a Skeksis, like a stripped down Skeksis, like Chamberlain when he gets stripped of his robes. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, pick a research here. We have three to choose from. This is random. Uh, it can create a little bit of weirdness as you're going forward in uh, not getting the thing you want when you really need it. But, you know, it, it is an interesting system that, that forces you to kind of diversify what you're doing. And, and I really do like it in the end. I will probably gripe about it at some point when it doesn't give me what I need. But uh, I am telling you right now, overall, I like the system. So we can choose from a physics lab, which back down on my planet could be used to uh, to harvest more of the uh, science or the physics, excuse me, the physics research, which goes into researching this item. So doing this would allow me to later create a physics lab on a planet, which would produce additional science. It's going to produce two science so it's going to produce, I keep calling it science. Uh, it's going to produce two physics, one society, and one engineering. You know, so that is just a way to gather more of these researches that are needed. And don't forget, we're always going to get plus 10 to our researches because we're fanatic materialists. But uh, it, it, this stuff is absolutely needed. These gauges don't go up without these resources coming in. So that's actually kind of a decent investment, but it's a little early for that. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. We also have deflector shields, you know, like deflector shields on a spaceship. Yeah, we don't have those right now. It'd be great to have those for combat. And finally, we have the solar panel network. Uh, the solar panel panel network basically allows us to defer the cost of operating our spaceports. So you install this in a spaceport, it uh, generates three energy credits, and that offsets the cost of actually running that spaceport. So your spaceport becomes a zero sum prospect. Uh, it is a really good thing to have if you're running really low on energy credits, as I often am, but uh, I got to go for deflector shields because they're freaking def deflector shields. So yeah. For society research, let's go ahead and queue something up. Colony ship is always tempting to take first. The problem is this research tends to get interrupted. The 360 is going to tell you how much you need. So as you can see, it's going to take 71 months at our current rate of five a month to research uh, a colony ship. This will allow us to colonize new worlds. It's extremely important, but uh, it's going to get interrupted by other events as we go. So what else do we have on the on the docket then? Well, we have uh, this uh, planetary unification that allows us to use propaganda broadcasts in order to uh, make our people a lot happier. Uh, but it'll also give us plus one influence. Again, like I said, this is a weird finite resource and uh, there are few ways to generate it. This is one of the primary ways to generate it by uh, by making uh, by by uh, initiating research that gives you something that boosts your influence. There's not really a building I've encountered that I can build to get more influence. This is kind of what you got. So uh, this is a really important thing to have and I almost never pass it up when I see it. And finally, we have central command that is a uh, Army upkeep uh, minus 10. Army is, uh, is, as you might expect, it's an army. A navy is a navy. So uh, these military fleets are a navy, right? They're ships, right? Army consists of, of, of army mans, and uh, they're on planets. So we did uh, sort of glance over that, uh, that uh, army tab on Ricks, but this would make our armies cheaper and give us a military academy building, which has some bonuses, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> So I think I am going to have to go for the colony ship to fight, despite the fact that I said it's going to take 71 months and there are going to be events that come up that are going to interrupt it. I think I just have to have it. 48 months is 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 a, a, a small price to pay for plus one influence, but uh, influence caps out at 1,000. So if I'm just sitting on a constant amount of influence coming in, I may find myself at the cap before I know it. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start the long trudge towards a colony ship. And finally, and we will not go over these in as much detail, Engineering. All right, here we go. So we have, uh, we can increase the damage of our army and just get a base five plus five percent to all minerals. So we just get five percent more minerals. We can uh, get fusion missiles, which will be a lot more damaging than the standard missiles that we probably currently have on our corvettes. Or we can go for the Betharian power plant, which will reveal the Betharian stone resource on the map that we can then harvest to create. Uh, Betharian power plants, which produce a lot more power than an average power plant. Uh, I did say, remember, that I have a lot of power problems. Uh, so I'm going to go for this one first thing. And our research is set. Our science ship is ready to, to go. And now we can unpause the game. That's right. Nothing has been happening this whole time in the background. So let's unpause the game and actually start things. And because we've uh, already done so much, I'm going to go ahead and speed up. Uh, I would love to use the shortcut key for this. The hotkey is plus, but my keyboard doesn't actually have a dedicated plus button. Uh, it is a weird uh, SteelSeries keyboard that has the little uh, 
section of extra buttons off to the left side, like the MMO style keyboard. Um, and it doesn't actually have a dedicated plus button because a bunch of buttons are doubled up in a weird way. And so the button that says plus on my keyboard doesn't make this happen. And as far as I can tell, it can't rebind the keys. So please give me a mod that can do that. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and speed up one more time. Let's do fastest. Why not? And we're going to watch this little guy do his business. He's going to fly around. He's going to survey planets and he needs to find something. Okay, so uh, unidentified objects. An unidentified object. All right, so uh, yeah, that's crazy. Could be a comet. Uh, not really sure. So um, could be a, 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 a hostile alien or it could be a, a docile alien. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so there's an unidentified, unidentified object uh, detected on a direct course towards an unknown system. I feel for people in the unknown system. Hopefully we're not in the unknown system. Uh, so, uh, Joy, we have uh, uncovered a, an actual resource, and this gives our construction ship something to do. Our construction ship is going to come over and build a mining station, and that mining station is going to allow us to harvest those two energy credits. So our seven uh, plus seven a month will go up by two once that is built. And our science ship continues his journey. If we want to know exactly what he's doing, we can click on him, and it'll give us the uh, it'll give us the uh, queue of events that he has uh, queued up waiting. Uh, you can also you know hit the number two, uh, which will select him. Well, actually, it's not the number two; it's the number three, which will select him and show you exactly what he's up to. So, man, we've got a barren starting system here. Uh, we have found nothing so far, but two energy credits. So we've got a hope that somewhere on Treadway or its moon, Nova Constantinople, uh, we will find some kind of resource that we can actually use. Cross your fingers here, folks. No. Great. All right, Audacity completed. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to get these pop-ups at first. They'll eventually go away. Uh, that's just Audacity, our construction ship, letting us know that he's done with his work. You also get a uh, warning up here that that has happened. And uh, the science ship is also done with his work, meaning that uh, we have really, yeah, we got nothing. We have one resource here, and we are already harvesting it. Uh, and so we're done. Our home system is a bust. This is a not a great home system to start in. <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at the uh, greater reach of the Frugal Empire. Uh, so we have one other system that appears to be yes appears to be located within our space. So that's not great, um, not great at all. So let's go ahead and queue up our uh, science ship and ask our science ship to survey the system. And in fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and send our construction ship there as well so that he'll be ready uh, when our science ship inevitably finds something right because it's going to find a mineral rich system over here right knowing that we probably should have we should have settled uh, initially on the uh, what is this the Vorsham 4 system uh, the Vorsham system Vorsham 4 apparently a potentially habitable world okay we'll know a little bit more and we've made a discovery alien life the marksman has made a, a startling find on Vorsham 4, planets teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Rix. It silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Yes. We have done it. We have discovered life. Apparently not intelligent life, but we have discovered life, and that is a great thing. So we are going to go ahead and uh, jump in here and we're going to start the building process. Uh, from this overall uh, galaxy screen, you can kind of start things moving along uh, with your uh, with your your harvesters, with your construction ship building, your mining harvesters. Uh, or you can get in a lot closer and you can come to the actual planet and you can click it and you can start the process. Oh, actually, all right. We are, we are finding a mineral rich. This is exactly what I hoped for. It is a mineral rich system here. All right, so uh, contact report. So this is uh, this is kind of uh, the what the media is saying when you see one of these contact reports. Uh, so the media says uh, the Frugal Mandate is a buzz with news of alien life found by the marksman. 
While hardly intelligent by frugal standards, the fascinating beings defy, uh, defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. That's kind of a standard event. You kind of get it every single time you play. There are several events that are standard to the early game. Uh, that is by no means a complaint. Um, you just kind of you, you get them and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that from the last time I played. Uh, by the way, I've started three games in this, gotten to the mid game and then realized I was totally screwed and started over. So <laughs> I do have a game with the uh, Valer Valer Valdarians, Valdarias, uh, that is actually uh, looking pretty good. So, you know, no, no real complaints. So one of our leaders has gained a level. Our scientist, uh, one of our scientists, uh, Paseka Masuka, has gained a, a level. So now he has two stars instead of one, uh, Just which just means that he uh, is better at his job now. And uh, he has a trait. Anomaly fail risk minus 10%. Oh, are you in command of our science ship? Uh, yes, Paseka is in command of our science ship. Perfect. So uh, yeah, he is uh, anomalies we will encounter at some point. Uh, he is 10% better than average at uh, actually resolving an anomalies successfully. So that's going to come in super handy. Uh, so yeah, good job. And especially science ship officers, they just get experience for doing what they do. Just surveying. Construction ships are not manned by an officer. Uh, other, other folks just gain experience sort of at a set rate as they're going along. So uh, we'll dismiss that. Uh, promotion or that uh, level up uh, uh, that level up warning there a lot of stuff going to be going on in this game as we get as we get further into it uh, the, the early game it is a little slow uh, so now we're bringing in plus three more minerals a month so that's good we're just trying to get off to a good solid start here that's really what we want so uh, yeah we've got another man this really was a man this is a mineral rich I just I'm I'm impressed this is one of the richest systems that I have seen goodness well that's within my reach very often in this game you'll see a system that is amazing and has a ton of different uh resources in it and you just can't find a way to get yourself to it all right the vorsham system has uh, successfully been surveyed and we have found an anomaly i was just speaking about anomalies wasn't i all right so uh yeah so uh, Paseca is going to try to, with his plus 10% chance, as you can see the breakdown here, the base risk, base risk is 30%. He immediately drops 10% off of it because of his skill. And then we lose another 7% of risk for, uh, the level. It's a level one. We're a level two scientist. So, uh, 12%, that's a risk of failing. So we have a, uh, we have a 12% risk of failing, 78% chance of success. So, uh, let's go for it. And the anomalies generate many of the events that will uh, continue to occur throughout the course of the game. Let's check in. Uh, hostile fleet detected. My goodness. Okay, so we have detected a hostile fleet. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on here. All right, enigmatic, enigmatic, because the news is reporting here, and we have an actual event. Okay, so uh, we an alien was sighted in the the vicinity of Ricks. Oh my God. Okay, we've encountered some form of alien vessel in uh, the Rixu system, uh, Rixaru system. Uh, right, it's uh, we're we're calling them Alpha aliens for now. Uh, we should proceed with caution. And the news says, uh, news of an alien ship humming through the ether have reached uh, Rix. Uh, yes, in many ways, ending the first chapter in the book of the Frugal Mandate. It's bid for stellar empire. Yes, we are not alone. Not only animals that we can laugh at for being strange, but there are intelligent beings out there that we need to uh, figure out. Are they friend? Are they foe? We have no idea. So uh, we have a uh, research project now, a project to uh, discover these aliens and to, to try to figure out what they are. So the alpha aliens, let's try to investigate them. Let's try to figure out what's going on. All right, we're going to set this research. And that is going to interrupt this research that we were doing over here because it is a society-based research you can see here from the icon so it's going to grab our scientist pull uh pull i a uh mr M mr ms ms gao uh off of the uh colony ship and uh push gao over to the uh research about the alpha aliens i think it's kind of really important though that we find out exactly uh what these aliens are up to what do they do they mean us harm who are they? Why are they here? Let's take a look. Let's try to figure it out. All right. 
So this is going to be a good stopping place to start. Man, I know we covered a whole hell of a lot in this episode, 35 minutes of uh, just me flapping off at the gums. Uh, but I think this is going to be a, a fun time. I certainly hope it is. Uh, here is the uh, Frugal Mandate uh, in all of its glory. We've discovered absolutely zero about the uh, world outside, but we are going to push forward and we are going to try to conquer this galaxy together. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.